trial former. What the hell does that mean? I'm just trying to do a trial, not a trial former. What's going on? The first trial for Rise from the Ashes. I'm nervous, but let's let's hop right into it and see what happens. February 23rd, 9.34. God, these court, these court things are so early in the day. I would not be able to do this. Lana. I forgot her voice. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there's still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. <laughs> Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept Jesus. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. Uh. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. The sky. You... You remind me a lot of Mia. You look like her too, but there is one, but there is one decisive difference between you and her, and that is, you're not a defense attorney. Ugh. <laughs> ha! Oh my gosh, I love you, Phoenix Wright. Jeez. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. He said you're not a defense attorney. So shut the f up. My first trial without a Faye helping me. Oh, let's go. I'm here with you. I'm here with you, Mr. Wright. No one's going to bail me out this time. Okay, never mind. They don't look like. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Great. Could you scientifically help me win this trial? Pretty please. Golly, we had to wait like 37 minutes? It's just the ones. With Edgeworth, again. In the courtroom. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Don't, don't forget, I don't think I forgot this man's voice. The judge. Santa. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, your honor. Edgeworth. Jeez, it's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. We're both about to be rusty. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. Ugh. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. I gotta massage my, like, throat real quick. I'll be right back. I, I might have left, like, the stove on. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. I love that word, unpardonable. I'm gonna have to start using that. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing everything to him. How old are you again? 16? Relax. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen. The cough-up queen? I can't read, bro. Uh, um, haven't I seen you somewhere? Haven't I seen you somewhere? Is that caviar? Ugh. You are at the caviar lunch, right? Oh, 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 caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. 
Judge is really wolfing it down. Oh, gosh. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta ball. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir, did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, your honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the f- What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name profession. Now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running lunch line these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Do -do 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 -do. Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. <laughs> Hurry it up, you f old Hmm. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, as you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, uh, huh? What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. Did, did I... did I... was I supposed to know this before now? Oh boy, alright, hold up, hold up. She was a first-rate homicide detective. Wh what? Miss Starr was a detective! <laughs> Even the judge is like, huh? Ah, uh -huh. I, 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 I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up, Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Okay, so maybe she shouldn't be talking like that. I don't know. Oh no. <laughs> for, for very well. You, you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? That's what I'm saying. Who are you? If I might have the cart's attention over here. Oh my god, not one of these. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. Block A, or A block, is for the prosecutor's office personnel. Okay, and there's a big ass wall dividing them. B block is for visitors and clients. Okay. Okay, so A is for workers, B is for non-workers, essentially. A chain divider separates the two blocks, which is the chain wall, okay. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutors' spaces, yes? Okay. The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. <laughs> I can only talk like her for so long. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. <coughs> parking lot floor plans, parking lot with Edgeworth's car. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, your honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Okay. We got beef. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can. If you can. Give them your worst, Miss Star. Oh. Are they talking about me? No shit, but like, why? Man, this sexist. Stop siding. Focus. Focus! I don't even think I'm... Okay, uh, I will. 
I was gonna say, I don't even think I can do, like, the voices for testimonies, but it's entertainment. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. One of my boyfriends. You got multiple ones. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Golly. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish... A g g garish... Car? Garish car? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Okay. You see what I'm talking about? Like... Relax. Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. <laughs> oh my gosh, bruh. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing, o nothing other than... The point of the knife, which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that, you... It... It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. <sighs> Woo! Let's get it. Somehow, okay, uh, if I remember correctly, we just press him. We just press him, because I don't really know, like, what- Okay, wait, can I look at my, uh, court record? Oh, gosh. Okay, hold up. Uh, last call made to her sister was at 518. <gasps> Ooh! Oh, 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 oh! I can use this against her because um, if if Lana made a phone call at five eighteen, she didn't get arrested like immediately on the spot. Ooh! Let's go. I'm still gonna press her, but still. Gosh, that was quick. All right, here we go. Hold it! I I missed that. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic ab ab abhorrence of the crime. Gosh, the words. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. <laughs> the lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing, given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. <laughs> Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Ooh. Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? Prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. So you hold a grudge. Laid off. She was fired. Let's get it. Information. It's coming in. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro. As you know, my testimony is unbiased and flawless. You just sat here talking about, like, how you indirectly have beef with prosecutors. And you're saying you're unbiased. You're... <laughs> you're trash. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boy. Okay, wait, really quick. Let me just see if I can... Oh, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I kind of lost track there. I really thought during her testimony she said something about arresting her on the spot, and I was about to present her with the phone. Anyway. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Let's just press her. This boyfriend. He's the detective. Not that boyfriend. The security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have... several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care... Care to join? 
the yet another boyfriend is position is still open for applicants. Uh, uh, I'll s stick with the lunches. Thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. <laughs> the security guard room is in the lot in a- Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's up there. Yes. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. Ooh. Ooh. That would be the room with the sec- or That would be the room with the security sign, which I can barely see, like... I can't- like, go up or anything. How do you expect me to see that? I am I supposed to infer, maybe? Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B Block. So, she was in B Block when she witnessed the crime. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed de detective's intuition at work. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a pre, pre premonition of the murder? There you go. It felt like, how would you say? Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pu pumpkin chock full of seeds, huh? I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's intuition, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes. Well, he was like a young cheese. What the? F a uh, young cheese? A pale white cheese, not not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. Then I must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. Wouldn't you say, Angel Star? Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. <laughs> Dude, this game is so funny. In any case, there, in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to the garish car. Hold it! By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's. Incidentally, the knife with the victim was stabbed. The knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed it was. Shit! Hmm, hmm. What an odd case this is. You're telling me, dude. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. She's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Let's get it. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep the silly opinions to yourself in the future, Rookie. Huh? <laughs> rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me... Jesus. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Ooh. I love when, like, characters have a hidden side that we don't see until, like, certain moments. That... that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plague... I can't even read that. I may be re relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Oh! <laughs> oh! How, why are we just now looking at this? Gosh, sometimes I hate these. Huh? A, 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 a photograph. You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, <laughs> one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you? A prosecutor? Think again. 
My boyfriend works in the photography division of Criminal Affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. The moment of the crime is photographed by Angel Star. Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. Whose coat is that? Why why is she wearing like the victim's coat? That looks like Bruce Goodman's coat. So, what was the defendant doing at that time? That was a press? Golly. Chief Prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Okay. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife after all. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's about right. I'm trying to think. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise, surprise set. What? You, you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I, I mean, a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken sat. Dude, that sounds so good right now. Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? So, the defendant was holding a knife. What then? And she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm. The defense has a point. Isn't that, like, illegal? Like, doing nothing but watching a, watching a crime? Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late. Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is flawless. It sounds pretty f fatal, dude. What, what do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. I kind of feel that, too. If people are, like, anxious or, like, like worrying around you, I, I tend to, like, be calm, cool, and collected. Level-headed. Don't, don't smile like that. Okay, I pressed her on everything. Like... What do you want me to do? <laughs> Somehow, I always knew it- Okay, wait, wait. Ooh! There's no prince! Is that something? There's no prince? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's try this. Nope. The music didn't stop. That's how you know you got it wrong. It does, I don't see any country. Yeah, really? My bad, Judge. My bad, Judge. I'm sorry, Judge. Sorry, Judge. Just for the who was caused by a four and a half inch knife, single step. I did not look at this. I'm confused. Okay, so this is new evidence. Real quick, hold up. Let me save. I am not restarting a trial. <laughs> okay. Let me just present her with the picture that she gave us. 
Uh, of course, I knew it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And you witnessed this. You saw Miss Skye stab the victim with the knife? As I've already said, yes. Ooh. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. That actually looks bomb, bro. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But, isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. Now look at me. This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? See that? I was wondering the same thing too. Like, okay, let's let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. I got everybody shook. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. <sighs> that, that had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Come on, bro. Yet, it was still stronger than your ever-feeble mind, Mr. Wright. Don't roast me, we're friends. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! Ooh, it, it, and how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? That's not even her coat, though. Is it? But it's a black and white photograph. Aw, <laughs> uh, yes. It's hard to tell, but this could be blood. What else could it be? What else could it be? Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem. Except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Uh, I've got a better idea. Uh. Wound was caused by a four and a half inch knife, a single stab wound was found. Loss of blood from chest wound. I'm confused. Is that even her coat? Let me just object. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the- okay, okay, see, I totally forget these things, these completely fly over my head. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apo- I'm so sick of people not, like, like, saying some shit, me objecting and being like, oh, uh, l let me redo my testimony. Like, what? That- that- that's it. Right, that- what? <laughs> if you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I I'm not sure I understand it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Oh, she was wearing the coat. Why- why- huh? Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Oh yeah. P premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those glove? Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. I thought those were just her hands. Whoa. That's why there's no fingerprints on the knife. Who, who is this? <laughs> Surgical gloves made out of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh. If it was not premeditated, then she would not be wearing those gloves. <laughs> Shit. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. They're just gloves, relax, guys. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. Okay, here we go. 
The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. If the... Yeah, hold up. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves. What? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Uh, impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I would not mind that, to be honest. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It, it, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before anything else scientifically uh, flawless has been fatal. What do we do this? My sister's girl. Let's just keep our heads but, uh, for some reason having her panic. Okay, okay. Don't smile. Okay, okay. What the heck does this mean? We already looked at this. Shoot, dude. We already looked at this. My sister's to 12. Oh, 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 um, 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 wait, oh, f um, uh, 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 you, okay, you see, you see, uh, this, these two numbers here, doesn't that look something like this, right, but at the same time, like, what could that be, so if this is upside down, which I don't think it is, because look, like, that says 12-2, right? If you flip it, it'll be 221, which is what the date the murder was. But at the same time, I don't know what 675 would become, because that upside down would read, like, SL-9, which doesn't mean anything. That's not a time for that. Oh, gosh. Um, let me just see if I can... No? Fuck. All right. I should have saved before I did that, huh? <laughs> I'm my bad, Judge. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I'm saving. I don't care. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief uh, car. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. I feel like this is it. Let me just go through this again. Wearing gloves. The defendant was a okay. Can we see them, please? Arg. This is bad. So I have to prove to them that this wasn't premeditated. What evidence do I have of that? Um, I have Bruce Goodman's ID. Whatever the hell. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. Five four or five eight four two one eight nine. Five eight four two one eight nine. I I'm trying not to be wrong, you know what I mean? Please don't tell me it's just one of these simple shits. No? Alright. Um... Hold up! Hold up! Oh, really? How could she get past the fence? Where do you go if you park in, uh, like, B-Lot? There is nothing to this testimony. Let me just press everything again. Okay, okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so it is, I think it is this. Hold on. But, 
it has to be jeez why would it not be the ladder though hold on hold on dude hold on dude man see I hate getting stumped like this it should be so simple Okay. See, this is, I think I mentioned this in like one of my previous Ace Attorney videos. It's so hard to remember what specific characters know versus what you know as a player. Like, I know, like, the knife has no prints on it. She was wearing gloves. Like, no shit. They don't, like, that hasn't been made clear yet to, like, the court, you know what I mean? I gotta keep track of this. Witness, <laughs> do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunchboxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. THE knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? The bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? Why did I say that so deep? <laughs> the defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony, like she should have done the first time. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh, I got her sweating. I love this. Even though it took me like multiple tries to pick the knife. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh, ah. Oh. Order. 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 Great. Now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Oh boy. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. W what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only prosecution need prove. Nothing less. Or nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know, as well as I do, she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. You thought. How dare you? Let's get it. My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really, no. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see about that. Okay. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. Jesus Christ. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. She did, that's right. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Human machine. I f dude, I swear to God, for some reason, I think that the blue badger thing, like, is the... Man. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office, and that shit takes like a half hour. It does sound like premeditation, doesn't it? 
So, if I ordered pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? Damn, she kind of roasting a little bit. In any case, the defendant may now cross-examine the witness. Let's get it. Time to take like 20 minutes to figure some simple shit out again. Honest guy intended to murder him. Hold it! Hold it. You've said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm talking- that's- that's what I'm about to tell you, Rookie. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she is about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Rookie. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Something's half-baked here, alright, and it's you? Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. One second, Joe. That's why she called the victim all the way down to the prosecutor's office. You have no proof that Miss Sky called him there. You have no proof that she didn't. So what? But you're the one, like, making, like, claims here. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant to Miss Lana Skye's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness? Why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. No claim, no proof, like what, what kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie, come here. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See? We agree there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? Uh, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. <laughs> okay. Okay. A white noise. Just ignore it. Judge is good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodwin. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Again and again! Hold up! Hold up! It is a single stab wound. Relax. You say she stabbed him again and- see, I'm smart. Sometimes I'm quick. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. Ugh. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh. You're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk! He's my hero! Really? <laughs> What about my objection? No one noticed my objection? Well, the witness. You got the crime scene set, right? The crime scene set? That's, that's hilarious, bro. Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. I just got real lightheaded. Whoa. But now, I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from the victim. That's why I thought she must have been... That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw. 
Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole si her red muffler. How do you mean? That's what I'm saying. Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. She's right. She's right, she's right. This guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? Is she not, like, right next to you? You know? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well, well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. <laughs> white noise, white noise. Actually, I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. Where? However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Starr isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. LMAO. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this is our chance. Chance for what, I wonder? Miss Starr has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder. Wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and... Relax, relax, relax. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. She has a grudge against her red muffler. Looked like blood to me. That's how gas the whole scene. Were. What are you talking about? Like, she's not even wearing it in this photograph, bruh. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photo. That's what I'm saying! Huh? Huh? But, but that can't be! The only professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? But, but it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. Wh what Bro. Very well. Witness, continue your testimony. I've been recording for over an hour. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. <laughs> this next testimony might be the moment of truth. Let's get it. Let's get it! Apprehending the suspect. Yeah, you'd have to go through- oh my gosh. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off, off to her side. Okay, th the wall, maybe? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. <laughs> That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is kind of a snake. Don't bother me. Don't bother me with the details unless you want to get bitten. No, 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 thanks. Note to self: Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. 
the chief pro the chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An, an oil drum. Hard to imagine. It was empty. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rower. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you will. Say less, bro. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. Hold it, bro. So where is this partition on the floor plans? Okay, I knew it means this wall next to the car. That's right. It's, yeah, it holds like water. You see the hose coming out of it? She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. How did you do that with the chain link fence? Like, I'm actually about to try this. Never mind. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details? Press her. The chain link fence is in the way. I'd like to see on this floor plans. Just to be safe. You feel me? The Lunchland car was... Yep, that big-ass van. Oh no. Oh shit. She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B Block. So, you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet away from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain-link fence in front of you. You went over it. Is it not... Huh? Is it not, like, from top to bottom? Like, floor to ceiling? Amazing. The cough-up queen. Lunch lady athlete, indeed. Yes. Would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. She could have gotten to my sister that fast. Oh, shit. Okay, I, I, I thought it went, like, to the top of the ceiling. My bad. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Okay. okay. So she mentioned the muffler. Yeah, right. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. You cheeky f Anyway, all I heard has all I all I heard her say the, was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Let's get it. Her phone. She can't mean. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the scene of the crime? The crime scene? Hmm. Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory... ...is like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone by hanging on the wall. Use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Yep, there's a phone right there behind the thing, so technically, so far, she's right. But why would her phone be on the other side of the wall? Near the car, there was an emergency phone. Apparently, it was out of order. So she used her cell phone. So she used her cell phone. Indeed. The emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? Elamail. You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. 
I saw it all. How she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha, I was going to ask the same thing. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. And she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. At this point, you haven't moved yet? So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and during that time, you climbed- And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence? <laughs> then, I boldly grabbed her arm. The chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it, Mr. Wright? I'm confused. Uh, uh, Phoenix knows something I don't. Phoenix knows something I don't, dude. She made to escape? Can you mean can you be more specific? She brushed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a dollop of lard on a pat of foot, huh? Huh? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She even kicked over an oil drum at me. An, an oil drum. There's an oil drum lying on its side at the scene of the crime. But it's strange. Hmm? What's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah. The parking lot entrance. That... that's right. It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent. More mysteries. I wish we could solve a few before finding more, though. So, Miss Sky tried to run. I'm sorry, my sister is so... Suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. Nope. Aw, oh, shit, I should have saved. Fuck! Alright. Now I only got two attempts left. Yep, my bad, Judge. I'm sorry, Judge. I'm sorry, Judge. I'm just, I'm, like, still tripping on how we're just ignoring the fact that she hopped a nine-foot fence, like, in no time. No, I feel like the phone comes into play here. Nope, 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 relax. I'm not redoing this trial. Really? I... see... I... I really didn't have a solid reason for picking that, I just kind of felt like it was that for some reason. You know what I mean? I... I really cannot put pieces together. I need to play Danganronpa again. I need another Danganronpa. <laughs> like, putting clues together? I can't do that. One plus one equals what? Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. His first big case! Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. <clears throat> look at this floor plans. Now look at me. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... Oh, how did you know she tried to make a phone call? God, I'm stupid. That's what I'm saying, like, how, how did I not see that? 
Jeez. Is do I have a mouse? How like it showed it. She was over here and she was over here. How did she know that she was making a phone call? That's just an inference. You don't take inference here. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If, indeed, you were in B block, you couldn't have seen that. Wha- What? <gasps> order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. <laughs> this is he. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. Yeah, me neither. The witness lied about... Miss Skye tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Maybe the security box where her boyfriend is, yeah? Yeah, Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. One. Mm. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. Yeah, the save button. Oopsies. The place- the security room, bruh! Take that. Take that! This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security guard room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have had to been able to see the emergency phone from there. She would have been able. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Her boyfriend, bruh. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. <sighs> Order. Order. Witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright? Doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, you're right, actually. Well, she's trying to pin it on Lana. But if Lana did actually do it, what's the point of her lying about how she saw it? Right. Huh? Could've just said she said- yeah, that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't change anything. That- you, you know what? She's right. Like, if anything, we're getting upset with her just because she lied. If she told us this right off the bat, she would've been cool. Exa- that's- But then at the same time, who took this picture? Ooh. Ooh, this photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. But who took that picture then? 
That truth still stands, right? It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness has found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So, tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Uh huh? M me? Who else? Dumbass. Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Okay, thank you, dear God. Miss Starr witnessed the crime from the security guard station, which is in A block on the second floor and can see the telephone and the crime scene. But she lied and said she saw it from B block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Um... It has to be the angle, because the distance kind of seems the same, and yeah, I would say the angle. I'm still going to say it, though, you know. Why, the angle at which she saw the crime of Kerr would change. The angle? What do you mean? What do, what do you mean? What do I mean? Uh, um, well... The security guard station is on the second floor, and, um, she would have sort of more 3D view of the crime. And this is important. Why? Um. God, oh, I was wrong. Okay. Man. F Just reload. Why was it- wait, why is it the distance? It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans, and it's quite clear. The, that, see? I, I literally said that. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! She's on the second floor. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take for her to reach the scene of the crime. Shit. <laughs> Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness. You. J yes. You ordered the squid wheels, right? Oh my gosh, bruh. I was bringing a PB&J lunch for, with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm. The boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. I did not know that's where the floors. is. I know it's where the, uh, the steps were. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking lot in B block. You don't you dare think anyone is gonna fall for that. What are you, Usain Bolt, running like that? That's quite the detour, no shit. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Oh man, golly. F five minutes. If anyone's falling for this shit, I swear to God. This is where the phone comes in. 518. It has a timestamp. This changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have a pho 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 photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? 
Absolutely. Give me that shit. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Absolutely, bro. I have the phone, bro. Give me the phone, bro. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest? Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. You actually can't. If you want al dente, that shit has to be at least eight minutes. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. SMH, bro. A five minute blank? Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, d don't get the wrong idea. I, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Damn, we got her shook, bruh. Well then, it seems we've come to think. Can we, like, can I be done? I've almost been recording for two hours. This really is, like, elongated than the previous episodes. And this is, like, DLC. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on her account of her professional history, huh? We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That, that was too close, though. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Oh my god. Can we stop, please? Please? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me, bro. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. Ooh, what was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Ooh, a triple decker. Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. F***ing hell. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. How- what kind of judge are you to be swooed by a triple-decker lunchbox? What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox? What the f Oh my gosh, this game. Let's go, come on. Please, let's just get this over with. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now... What is that? To the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was of course the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Oh. What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and de She is- Thank you, like, witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed. Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in friendship shoe. In any case, your honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be known shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. It, is that right, Mr. Wright? seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrated. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. 
Don't forget, I used to be a detective, as I mentioned previously. This shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. I'm sick of this. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Ugh. It, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen right now. You could at least study some evidence law. Really? The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Why? <laughs> Very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Here, let me actually do that instead. This is... Uh, I should have mentioned those five minutes when I came... Okay. Yeah, no shit. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Compared to that, a five minute blank seems nothing, means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the file lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence? When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This is when the suspect is admitting she did it. <laughs> but false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Everyone does that shit, though. Let's just get this over with. His voice is hard to do. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? No, you didn't. Can you tell us why? And you found this shoe with the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with a shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. You f In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of crime. Now, tell us what you did next. Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One, of course, was the victim's. So, you brought it to the forensics department. If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have bloodstains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. That blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up! Uh, well, blood comes in four types. A, B, O, and A, B. However... You can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types of all the blood tests out there, which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. Th that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. 
That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. I'm going to save. I feel like I should save. What is that? Peppered fish guts? No! Some like it hot, Mr. Ryan. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm confused, bro. A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Uh, 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 yeah. Duh. Of course there's a problem. There always is. Yeah? <laughs> if I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Whatever. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is the contradictory... What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Ooh. There's blood on the underside. I'm confused. Am I missing something? Oh, he stepped in his own blood? I wonder if you noticed there's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. You just threatened me in court. Like, what does that say? Hmm. Indeed. There is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of this shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe. This man was stabbed in the trunk of a car, was he not? The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints around this? Okay, never mind. I was right, but, like, for the wrong reasons. That's okay. Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That's not why I picked it. I picked it because he was in the trunk and he got stabbed. He couldn't have, like, walked around. But I guess at the same time, there wouldn't be any footprints either. So I, I was right. I was right. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. Objection! Objection. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could be a... There could have been bloody footprints. No. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Fierce back and forth. Order. 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 Well, witness. What? Uh, I... Uh... Great going, Mr. Wright. But it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. I'm not. What? What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Ooh. 
She's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman, Rower. I thought that was a strange thing for a normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Mm, I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though, apparently, you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. <laughs> Witness, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would have become evidence against her. Jesus Christ! That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a pros prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, this guy's right hand was hurt. Ooh, ooh! Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. M Mr. Wright, do something, please! Shit. What, what, what can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But what? Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, your honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Hey, Emma. Huh? M me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well. I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox, a lunchbox called Evidence. W wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. This has been going on for like two hours. Granted, I've like looked at my phone a few times, but that only totals to like 10 minutes. This, sh this trial is like an hour and 50 minutes already. The time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt in court. Of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up queen. Look at this. Jesus Christ, bro. Another photograph. We're gonna be here for like another hour. I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. This is tiring. I'm, I'm gonna need more coffee after this. M Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! There isn't any. <laughs> How do I get rid of the text? I can't see behind it. Hey, it's clearly wet. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I- I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I- I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. 
I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Right. Wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt and take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. 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 This is the last bit. Okay. This is heat. This is... Let's go. Very well. This time, I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Can you scream hold it? Thank you. Your Honor, wait. Please, for like, a little bit longer. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? N no, it can't. Then it will be too late, dummy. Look at this photograph, now look at me. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah? I'll think later. Y yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Whoa! Whoa! The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. I was about to say, what? Wait just a minute, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said, muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also part of a car or a motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and uh, I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? So what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Thank you. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? what? Christ. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. I'm just gonna keep saving because I have no idea, like... Tell us why you think this piece of cloth and the muffler is related to this case. Uh... Seriously? Wait, 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 wait. I'm wow, that's so trash. All right. Yes, I'm loading shit. Tell us why you think this piece of clothing, piece of cloth, and the muffler is related to this case. Oh, oh, oh. Duh. God, I'm an idiot. It's I've been playing this for a while, but give me a break. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what she had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler? Ah. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh, what? <laughs> Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. Are you sure about that? Sus. Suspend? 
I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. Then the verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Absolutely, says Phoenix. But we made it. We, we made it! This court will adjourn for 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry. Oh. 30 minute recess? Jesus Christ. I have no idea what's gonna happen here, dude. You know? Who did it? Did she do it? Did Angel Star do it? I feel like we're not gonna know who did it until like day two or day three. Or like day three or day uh, five. But golly, that was so long. I remember reading like the in the previous episode that this was the longest episode of the game, which I regret reading now, but I guess if even if I didn't read it, like, this would have been obnoxious. I'd Like, trials have never been two hours. The only one that was this long was the last trial, and that shit was only like an hour and 45 minutes. Golly. We discovered a lot in this trial, though. At this point, though, Lana Sky is still guilty. Obviously, she's not, but to everyone else, she is. Goodness me. Yeah, I'll come back to this, you know, when I can. <laughs> hoo -wee. Okay, I'm gonna do this episode and see how long it takes me and then continue the Ace Attorney trilogy. Or maybe I'll take a break after this, I don't know. This seems like a real intense episode, you feel me? But with this, I am also wanting to start First Light to finish up the Infamous series. I want to start Control again. That's no longer a new game by any means. At this point, I just want to play it. I did start my Last of Us Grounded playthrough on my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash GameCube, or link in the description. The Last of Us Part 2 got pushed back to May. Can you believe that? They just announced that today. And I'm also doing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood 100% as I'm planning to do the entire series 100% on my Twitch as well. So please go click my Twitch in the description and give me a follow. If you watched the whole video and liked it, please consider leaving a thumbs up, a comment, what you think, like what the hell is going on here, um, share the video to your socials, all that jazz, I appreciate it, if you want, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired, dude. Thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing, you know what I mean? Bye. <laughs>